Designing an effective training program is often seen as a complex task. Should you follow a body part split or maintain full body training sessions? Also, should you train with lighter weights and higher reps or train with heavier weights and low rep ranges? And what about training volume? With how many sets should you be training each muscle group? In today's video, I will discuss the basics of training programming so that you can design your own effective training program and start making the muscle development progress you want. If we look at any strength training program, there are three main variables that we should consider. Training volume, intensity and frequency. Effectively organizing your volume, intensity and frequency will help you make greater progress and also create better progressive overload. To help you get the best results possible, I will discuss how you can organize the three training variables based on your current training experience. First, let's start with training volume. Based on Baz Fell and others, a simple definition of training volume is the total number of challenging sets per muscle group. So if you train your chest with 15 working sets per week, your chest has a training volume of 15 sets. Up to a certain point, training volume has a linear relationship with muscle and strength gain. And this is logical, if you do just one set of chest training per week, you will get less progress than if you do five sets of chest training per week. But you can't keep increasing volume linearly forever and expect greater muscle gains to occur. In fact, there is a point at which muscle and strength gains decrease if you continue to increase training volume further. This usually happens when you train with more volume than you can recover from. Using a training volume that is too high for you will leave you chronically fatigued and result in your performance going down, which places you in a suboptimal environment for progress. This is why training more is not always better. So now the question is, how much training volume do you need to challenge your body but not overdo it? And everyone's volume requirements are slightly different. For instance, we know that experienced trainees need more volume than novice lifters to make strength progress. Even though training volume is highly individual, from the scientific literature there are good general guidelines that we can use as a starting point. A 2017 meta-analysis gathered the data from 15 training studies to provide evidence-based recommendations on training volume and muscle growth. The researchers found linear increases in muscle growth up to 10 plus sets per muscle group per week. This tells us that most people should aim to have at least 10 sets per muscle group per week if maximizing muscle growth is the goal. So if 10 sets per muscle group is the minimum recommended volume, what is the upper limit? Based on another 2017 paper, it seems that for most people a nice range to be aiming for is to have 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. And we can be logical with this volume range. Beginner trainees can stay closer to 10 sets per muscle group per week, while more experienced trainees that are more used to higher volume workouts can scale their training volume upwards to 20 sets per week. The training volumes that you are used to doing in your training has important implications for how much volume you should be doing per week. This is also supported in the research. In one study, the researchers compared two different approaches to determining your weekly training volume. Over eight weeks, the participants trained one leg with an assigned training volume of 22 sets per week, while the other leg was trained with an individualized training volume of 20% above their usual volume. The researchers found that the leg being trained with an individualized training volume experienced greater gains in muscle size than the leg being trained with an assigned volume of 22 sets per week. So instead of maintaining a random number of sets per muscle group per week, look into your current training plan and see where your volume is currently at. Say for instance you are training each muscle group with 15 sets per week. Well then it might be worth a try going to 18 sets per week in your next training program. But only make this volume increase if you feel well recovered from your training sessions. If your current training program makes you feel extremely tired, it might even be worth a try to reduce training volume. So to sum up training volume, for most people training with between 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week is a good aim. See the screen for a general guideline I like to use with most of my clients based on experience level. Because there is overlap between muscle groups, you will notice that certain muscles have higher volume goals than others. For instance, if you train your back with a pull-up, not just your back muscles are trained, but also your biceps and rear deltoids. You can decide in which category you fall based on your previous experiences with training volume. Make a screenshot of this figure and consider it the next time you plan your training approach. So now that we have a rough idea of how many sets per muscle group you should be doing per week, let's look into how these sets should actually look. Should you be doing higher reps with lower weight or higher weight with lower reps? The concept of training intensity essentially describes the repetition ranges you use in your workouts. If we have to believe old school bodybuilding magazines, then we have to train in an 8 to 12 rep range at all times to gain muscle. While there's nothing wrong with an 8 to 12 rep range, there are more rep ranges that can work for muscle growth. In a 2015 study, 18 volunteers were divided into two groups. The first group trained with the traditional 8 to 12 rep range to failure, whereas the second group trained with 25 to 35 reps to failure while matching training volume. Both groups gained a similar amount of muscle after an 8 week training period. In another study, researchers compared training with 10 reps or 3 reps per set while matching training volume. Again, similar increases in muscle size were found. 
Perhaps the most convincing piece of evidence is a 2017 meta-analysis that gathered the data of 21 studies on rep ranges and muscle growth. The researchers found that muscle growth can occur with a wide variety of rep ranges, as long as the number of sets performed is matched and each set is taken close to failure. So there is no narrow muscle growth rep range. You can gain muscle with low, moderate and high rep ranges, as long as each set is challenging and taken close to failure. Keeping around 1-2 to two repetitions in reserve is a good aim for most people in terms of intensity of effort. But just because there is no specific hypertrophy rep range doesn't mean that rep ranges are irrelevant because it's still important to consider fatigue management. If you perform 20 repetition deadlifts, that will pretty much feel like a cardio workout. Whereas if you just train with 3 repetitions on every single working set, your sets will be demanding and the stress on your joints also higher. So for most people, I would suggest staying between 5 to 15 repetitions per set in their training. On the big compound movements, we go for 5 to 10 repetitions, while on smaller isolation lifts, we can aim more for around 10 to 15 repetitions per set. Training in this variety of rep ranges may have benefits for muscle growth, since this can help preferentially target both type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. So to sum up training intensity, we have flexibility in terms of what exact rep range you use for muscle growth, but for most people, I would suggest staying between 5 to 15 repetitions per set. So now that we have discussed training volume and intensity, let's look into how we can organize your training volume and intensity throughout the week to support better muscle and strength gains. How you organize your training volume in a week is referred to as training frequency. If you have 15 sets for chest training, do you do all of these 15 sets in one chest day, in two upper body days, or do you divide the 15 sets over three full body days? Training frequency is a relevant variable because it determines how you distribute your training stress throughout the week. Some people like to train a muscle group so hard once every week that they cannot train that muscle group again until the next week. Even though this may sometimes feel like you're doing something good because you feel sore for multiple days in a row, there is something to say for having a higher training frequency. A 2015 study divided 20 trained male volunteers into two groups. Group 1 trained each muscle group three times per week with a full body routine. Group 2 trained each muscle group once per week with a body part split. After eight weeks, the full body training group gained more muscle. Another 2018 study gathered the data from 22 resistance training studies on training frequency and strength. In this review, it was also found that higher training frequencies generally translate into greater strength gains. The most likely reason that training each muscle group 2-3 to three times per week produces greater benefits is simply that you can perform better in your training if you distribute your training volume throughout the week. Just think about it. Let's say you train your back with 15 sets in a week. If you perform all of these 15 sets in one training day, the second half of your workout will be of lower quality. The first 8-10 to 10 sets of your training session will fatigue you for the rest of your workout and then your performance will drop. This is different if you divide those 15 sets over 2 or 3 training days. You will be able to maintain a high level of performance on most of your sets since you are more recovered. And if you are able to consistently perform better in training, you will eventually get better training adaptations. But now the question is, if you want to train every muscle group 2-3 to three times per week, how can you organize this in your weekly training plan? Well, if you train 3 times per week, then organizing your training volume into something like 3 full body days or an upper lower plus full body split works. If you train 4 times per week, do an upper lower twice or upper lower plus full body twice or push pull legs plus full body works as well. For 5 times per week training, you have many options as well as you can see on the screen. Remember that there's no such thing as the perfect training split. As long as you train in a good volume range for your experience level, have a good intensity range and divide your volume per muscle group into 2-3 to three sessions per week, you will see good results. So to sum up this video, we have 3 main training variables that we need to consider in the design of your training program. Training volume refers to the number of challenging sets per muscle group and for most people doing 10-20 to 20 sets per muscle in a week is a good aim. Training intensity can be seen as the repetition range you use in your training. For most people, aiming around 5-15 to 15 reps per set is a good general range. Training frequency refers to how you divide your training volume over the week. Typically, training each muscle group 2-3 to three times per week is beneficial. If you are looking for a practical training program that puts the principles discussed in this video into practice, then I suggest you check out my free 3-day full body routine and I'll put the link in the description of this video. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a better idea of how effective training programming works. If you have any questions, then feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video.